and they said yes together, and they've been going amazing, amazing strong since. Well, I guess ultimately, if a couple, whoever, a partnership, a marriage, whatever, is really, really committed to changing their results, they have to be willing to look at the feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the good news, people. It doesn't take having a a physical sexual affair mm -hmm. to, to 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 turn things around because long before there was a physical sexual affair, there was probably other ways of avoiding in that relationship and Definitely. disengagement of TV or computer or video games or working or whatever. And and it's up to us to recognize the signs of disengagement. Yeah, because you know a lot of those. The first affair happens, which is then a path to that physical affair. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I can you name like a thousand people that, you know, were being disengaged by this activity who then found someone through that. Yep. Who all of a sudden because, oh, I'm, I'm over here and now I've, I've, I'm spending all my time volunteering for this homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. That somehow in my ego, I've made it okay to be away from my family, away from my wife because, oh, well, I'm working with this homeless shelter. Only to meet this amazing person who is also so committed to these homeless people. And now I see someone who I feel has a, a common purpose with me. And so now I want to be with that person instead. Because this person gets me and gets what I'm about. And the next thing you know, okay, here we are. Broken marriage. Yep. Broken relationship. Yep. And ultimately it was, okay, so why are you disengaging in the first place? How is it that you ended up wanting to work at a homeless soup kitchen to fulfill your purpose and you didn't enroll your partner in that. Right. And if your partner was incapable of being enrolled in that, why were you married or with them in the first place? If you don't share a common purpose and value and reason for existing on this planet, why are you with that person in the first place? I don't know. It's insane. It feels like in a lot of relationships that someone is always dragging the other regretfully and just, just painfully. So yeah, why not just choose easy and end the painful relationship and go find your passion. And, and rather than having someone that you're already attached to and then finding someone that you really might connect with, cut all that crap and just go and be your purpose. And that, that magical person will be in your life automatically. Living a purpose-driven life calls other purpose-driven people into your space. And yes. To a certain extent, we have to be willing to walk away. We have to be willing to say, oh my gosh, I got into this relationship for all the wrong reasons. And I'm not one who uses wrong a lot. Yeah. But using reasons that don't serve my purpose. Well, honestly, that's exactly where I was. That's exactly the words that I said from my first relationship. I got into it for the wrong reasons and thereby cr created the same experience. Created same it. result. And then you, have, you had to, at some point, decide... Rather than looking like I was wrong, you just had to decide I'm taking back my purpose. Absolutely. And it gets to be okay, people. You get to be okay with letting go of what doesn't work. Because this whole thing, oh no, we have to stay together because the kids. We have to stay together because we have this house or this dog or this piano. Or because we have this piece of paper and this ring that says we are. Mm -hmm. Or we have this temple or this religion that said we're... We're now sealed in heaven as we are on earth. And we have to stay together and make this work. Baloney. You don't. You have a purpose here on this earth. And there are people and, and beings here to support you in that. So either you're going to get busy being on purpose and on, 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 on reason for your existence. Or you're going to sit here wasting your time, spinning your wheels in a relationship that doesn't work. Wondering why you feel no purpose or direction in your life. And completely unsupported. Compl completely unsupported. Not only unsupported, but unnurtured, mm -hmm. unvalued, unloved. And wondering, what can I do to make this person love me? Well, maybe this isn't the person. <laughs> That's so true. Okay, maybe, maybe you got into that relationship for all the wrong reasons. Maybe they're loving you as much as they can. Yeah, and in the way that they know how. Yeah. And you know what? You've got to be willing to walk away and say, yeah. oh, okay. Well, this person is this person. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I want to live this way. I yep. want my life to show up in this way. So as a result, I have to be willing to just say, okay, I'm going to walk away. 
How awesome would it be if a conversation looked like, I get that you love me and you're showing me the love that, that you can in the way that you know how, but that doesn't work for me. I deserve to have this way shown to me and, you know, bless you. Go. And it's possible for us to be, still be okay and be in relationship with these people. It's true. We just don't have to be married to them. We don't have to be romantically involved with them. We can still be in relationship with them. And sometimes we get to because we have children with them or we have a business with them or we work in the same office with them. But we've still got to be willing to let that go, that attachment to that relationship go and find a relationship and a partnership that supports us in our commitment. Because ultimately, all we're going to do is spin our wheels. And we're going to figure out at some point, my life means nothing because I have not been I've not been living on a purpose. I've just been living. And as a result, I feel like I've wasted my life and all my time and you have stolen it. Mm -hmm. You have wasted my life. Yep. I've given you the best years of my life. If I had known then what I know now. Well, the truth is you knew then. Uh Uh-huh. You knew if you had stopped for one second to recognize that this person fulfills one thing, and that is my desire to get laid. Well, then you could have just had sex with them. Yep. And saved yourself 25 years of miserable marriage, unhappy children, and a wasted life. Or... Beautifully put. Or sit down and have a conversation with this person who you supposedly love. And talk about the fact that we have no drive, no vision, and no purpose in our relationship. And that doesn't work. How great would it be to have a partner who actually supports us in experiencing unconditional love, joy, unity, and peace on this planet? And if that person doesn't, that's okay. Great guy anyways. But you know what? We're going to go find something else. It's up to us as individuals. We don't get to sit back Monday morning quarterback and say, oh, well, Tiger Woods was a dog because he went and he didn't see what he had. And now he's gone off and he's cheated on his wife and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Stop. Before you start judging the breakdown that Tiger Woods experienced in his relationship, how about you take a look at the breakdown you're experiencing in your relationships and how you avoid and how you're having an affair? Because here's the bad news, people. The majority of people who are married right now are having an affair one way or another. Whether that affair is with food or with video games or fixing the car or going to work or drowning yourself in kids and PTA meetings and church. There's far too many ways to be having an affair that takes you out of your relationship, out of your partnership and consequently away from your purpose. Value your relationships enough to get them all in, in, in alignment with your purpose or let those relationships go. Because they're either all in alignment or they're not. And ultimately, this issue of infidelity will magically just not be here. Because if everyone was in relationship with everyone else for the purpose of being a unique contribution, and everyone was in relationship to support that, those other people in that purpose, we would have nothing but perfectly working relationships. So it's up to us. Either we step up and enroll those people who are important in our lives and our vision and purpose in life, or we stop bitching when, when, when so-and-so has an affair and we just move on. So that's the show. Take it or leave it. Thank you, Melissa. You're amazing. Okay. Thank you for all of that. I get that it's time for us to step it up one more notch. So we'll see everyone next week. Goodbye, everybody. Talk is Cheap is a 16 Stone Media production. This show is hosted by Jason Beckett and co-host Melissa Barlow. All rights reserved. Copyright 2009.